So when it comes to sampling, I generally use Edison. I would run my turntable directly through my audio interface and have that come into Edison. Uh, other than that, I would also probably just load up an MP3 or a WAV file and you know find whatever loop point and sample that region and then put it into the Fruity Slicer. I use the Fruity Slicer to chop up my samples. Depending on, I guess, the type of sample I'm using or the type of project I'm doing, I may use the FPC, but I found the Fruity Slicer to be quick and efficient for me, um, paired with the cord to allow me to you know, trigger the samples in the way I want and the time stretch and all that. So I'll, I'll go over first what I have here as a sample to so show you what I would do. So with that, right now I have the free slicer set up by default. So this is another question I usually get about, you know, how do you properly set up the fruity slicer where you can trigger your samples to mimic like an MPC. Now, with the fruity slicer, there's a few things you're going to have to do. Because if you were to have something like this and you have your sample, you already found the loop point you want, you drop it in, it's going to do some strange things. First, it's going to dump everything into the step sequencer and then you're gonna have to go in and delete it you know it's better to do it right you know the first time set it up so when you do a new project you know you have it and it's ready to go so with the free slicer I'm just gonna put a fresh one in here again so with that the first thing you want to do is uncheck auto dump because that will put it right into the step sequencer. The next thing now I do to set up with the cord is to go into the in instrument tab, uncheck the envelope button here, and then in the miscellaneous tab, set the polyphony to one. If you set it to anything other than that, then the note will repeat to the number that you set. So if you put it to two, it's gonna, you know, any chop you do is gonna repeat twice and not cut itself off. If you do it that way, it's just going to be one time uh, it, the pad will play. Also with the envelope off, that allows you to hit the button once, take your finger off, and then the sample plays for just that chop instead of pressing and holding and you're going to have to press and hold it for the duration of the chop and then take it off. It's not really efficient to work that way at all. So now I'll go and drop it in and so we have it all set up there usually set it to 16 beats because as you know there's 16 pads on the cork and then chop it by beat now with that I'll set whatever the time stretch I want it to have and whatever pitch I want to have it be at and now if I go on the cork and of course you have to have a scene set on the cork like a, you would have for the FPC where you're going to have to match each note to the chord. Uh, the chord is of note value below FL for whatever reason. Uh, it's from 7 till version 9. It's been like this. I don't know if they've changed this in version 10. So you'd have to go in, you know, see which each note is. Um, in FL, the first one is C5. The second one is C5 sharp. So on the chord, you go into settings, hit your first pad. It's going to say C4. You just put a note below and just, you know, tune each one so it matches that in the free slicer. So right now, if I was to play this, it should play once. Let's see here. So you get the gist of that. So with that, now I can go and record into the playlist, which I'll go through next. 